Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Will Beeson of Civilised Bank. And we're at Finextra's Next Gen Banking event at Level 39. Thank you for joining me, Will. My pleasure. Are SMEs getting what they need from traditional banks? And if not, why not? It's a great question. I think there are two elements of that. One is uh, a product set, using traditional bank terminology. Uh, that, uh, that, that, that can serve SME customers and their needs, and the other is the delivery of those products. When we talk about, pro rather, when, when banks talk about products, they traditionally mean loans, savings accounts, foreign exchange, invoice discounting. The products fundamentally are, are great. Uh, often where incumbent banks have issues meeting SME needs is with the delivery of those products. So it's everything from uh, designing the appropriate suite of, of, of products and services to meet customer needs to actually um, communicating with the customer to, to understand what the needs are, uh, to, to, to really fulfill that SME's uh, fundamental long-term uh, strategy. How are challenges looking to serve the SME segment? Oh, I suppose the question, firstly, well, it depends on a couple things, uh, maybe a few ways to frame it, and, and I would answer it one, firstly by defining the SME segment. So uh, in our view at Civilized Bank, it's, uh, it's companies uh, traditionally um, operating companies, not startups, companies with, with track records, uh, with between uh, 1 and 25 million pounds of turnover per year. Um, that said, the SME space more generally, if you talk about the way other banks uh, just define it, the other way alternative lenders define it, can be anything from sole traders to companies of you know, up, up to a billion in turnover. And I think different uh, kind of niches, different segments of that market have different needs. Sole traders often need more cash management, uh, transactional banking uh, accounts, similar to the way that, um, that, that, that a retail customer would. They might also have some working capital needs that they need to deal with. As companies get uh, a bit bigger, they maybe start doing international trade, uh, they, they, they need support with, with asset finance, with foreign exchange, um, and, and they look at more creative ways to, to finance their business. Once you get to big companies, you often have in-house treasury functions uh, that, that, that may need totally different things from banks. Uh, so the, the, the segment that, uh, that I personally, we as a bank, are most interested in, that 1 to 25 million uh, segment, are, are, um, are interested in, in, in things like um, certainly cash management, uh, but, also, but also lending. But they're not necessarily uh, financially savvy from a banking standpoint. So the SME is specialized in its own business. The bank should be spe specialized in the banking business. And the same way the SME customer uh, provides a service and a, and a good to its customers, the bank should do the same. So far, they've, they've uh, traditionally they've provided both. But in recent years, the, the shift has been very much more on, on pushing product as opposed to offering holistic services, which is what, what SMEs need. What are the overall risks or opportunities for the UK when it comes to the rise of new banks versus alternative lending or financing? So, specific to SMEs, um, we're talking about both SMEs and I suppose businesses more broadly, access to capital is fundamental for, for economic growth, both in the short and long term. Uh, and alternative lending platforms have, have come about to uh, meet the need for, 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 for funding access. Traditionally, banks have been the key suppliers of, of, of funding to businesses, but in recent years, access to, to, to lending from banks hasn't been what, what it could be. As a result, that access demand has been met by new, new entrants in, in the form of alternative lenders. While that access to capital is important, what's, what's of uh, equally fundamental importance is continuity of access to capital. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's not access to capital today, it's access to capital through the economic cycle. Uh, because a business that takes on funding needs to uh, continue to operate, manage its business, and in many cases, access further funding uh, down the line in the form of refinancing, in the, term of, uh, in, in the form of uh, business growth fueled through, through future, future financing. So if alternative lenders are, um, are, are effectively providing um, cheap uh, and, and easy financing today, but aren't, aren't around uh, years from now to, to ensure that continuity, th there's, there's a risk of uh, kind of exacerbated economic cycles, so booms and busts. Uh, banks, on the other hand, have strong capital bases uh, and, and traditionally are, are more stable, but they haven't been a, uh, able to provide the level of financing that the alternative lenders have. So what's required at this point is uh, a, 
a, a unity effectively between the strengths of the bank and the strengths of the alternative lender, uh, likely through through uh, through uh, through collaboration between banks and lenders, to, to provide access to capital, but in, in a safe, stable, uh, c continuing way. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Emily. And thank you for watching.